So this part of the woodland is absolutely peppered with these mushrooms. And I'm sad to say that these ones are deadly toxic. Um, but it's worth us getting to know these ones as well as the edibles, because we'll come across them. And when we do, we want to be able to be confident that we know this is a deadly toxic mushroom and we should steer well clear of it. Because if this was an edible mushroom, we've got quite a few, even peppered throughout here, that would make us a really nice pot of food. But we don't want to eat this one, it's called the deadly web webcap. If we eat this one, we're going to have serious, serious issues. So if we were to eat this within, it could be within six hours, it could be within three weeks, we would eventually get kidney failure. The symptoms are like flu to start with, um, and then a thirst for liquid, so we'd be drinking lots of liquid, and then we'd reduce the amount of urine that we pass until eventually we have kidney failure. Um, within those three weeks, or possibly even hours, we really need to be getting to hospital for, for pretty major medical intervention. Now, the deadly web cap here, I couldn't say this one is for sure the deadly web cap. Um, it's quite difficult to, to identify specifically for, for, for the Cortinarius, the family of this one. Um, and I'm saying this one's the deadly web cap because we are surrounded here by conifers. But we do also have the odd broadleaf pepper throughout. So it could be easier, but I'm going to go with a deadly web cap. Now the Cortinarius family, once they get older, a little like this one just here, become a little bit more difficult to identify. But what's really nice, specifically with mushrooms, is that we usually get a mushroom in every stage of its life. So you can see just here, we've got a very miniature one coming through, nearly baby one here. We've got one here that's slightly larger until we've eventually got to a full size one right here. So we've got it all the way from birth to full size to reproduce into one even down here that's starting to rot away, which is fantastic. It makes the job of identifying mushrooms so much easier. We don't have to wait months and months like we do with plants. We've got everything, all the information we need right here. Now the key for identifying the Cortinarius, because it's a family we want to get wary of. There's some really deadly mushrooms in there. Now pick this little one down here. The key for identifying them is that, well, one of their names is web caps. So you can see underneath here, on the cap, just where it connects the stem, the cap domes down and then the gills are underneath there. And then just here, we've got a web. It actually looks like a spider's living in there. And it looks like a spider's created a web between the stem and the edge of the cap. And it's just webbed, webbed, webbed all the way around. And the idea of this web is that it's gonna protect the gills until it starts to open. So it starts to open up like this um, to a point where the gills um, like far along in their production that they can start producing the spores, the reproduction, the whole point that it's put this mushroom up and the web disappears and then those gills drop their spores and it'll spread the spores everywhere and it'll look to reproduce that way. But those webs are one of the key features. But there is times like this when we can come across just big ones and there might not be any baby ones. Um, and then we've got a couple of different keys for identifying once it gets large, once the web's disappeared for, for identifying that. So the spores of this one are really important as well. So if we wanted to take a spore print of this one, what we'd do is we'd cut it just here below the, the cap and we'd take that cap and then we'd put the cap on top of two sheets of paper. We'd have a black piece of paper, we'd have a white piece of paper, we'd bring them together and we'd lay the cap in the middle here. And then the cap would drop its spores. We'd put a little glass, sorry, uh, or a bowl or something over the top. I usually like to go for a clear one so I can have a look to see the spores are dropping. Um, and this one produces a dark brown spore print. So we'd see that on the white sheet of paper and we wouldn't see it so well on the black sheet of paper. But if it was a white spore print, we'd see that well on the white, uh, black piece. But because this is coloured, it'll show up on the white piece. Um, yeah, that's really important to start with identification because all of the Cortinarius produce that um, dark brown spore print. So if we were to pick it, there is sometimes little tells so sometimes you can see on the stem here that you've got remnants of, um, of the web and then sometimes the spores can be held in that remnants of the web. You don't always see it on all of them, but you do on some. Um, the gills uh, are adenate, slightly emarginate, so that means they come in here and then they go back up. So if that was the stem, the gill comes down uh, this way, and then it comes slightly up and then back down to connect to the stem. So it comes like this. And you can see that widely spaced, plenty of intermediate, so plenty of gills growing between the gills. 
and they're also kind of that rusty brown colour that the spores will um, the spores will be as well. Stem's quite chunky, it can be slightly bulbous sometimes at the base, um, often twisted, so you can see this one's twisted um, as well. Um, cap, same colour as the base, um, nothing special or significant, the key thing is that webbing underneath. And it's worth getting to know the Cortinaris family, there's loads in there, they're not the easiest ones to identify down to specific mushrooms, but if you get used to the family as a whole, then you know to steer well, well clear of them. Um, yeah, so this one is the deadly web cap, something we want to have on our radar so we make sure that we do not eat it. Um, like I say, somewhere between six hours to three weeks and it can be deadly, deadly fatal.